Imagine a storm so powerful, it intensifies from a tropical depression to a Category 5 hurricane in just 48 hours. This is exactly what happened with Hurricane Milton, one of the most devastating storms to hit the U.S. in recent history. But why was this storm so dangerous? And how did it grow so fast? In this video, we'll explore the rapid development of Hurricane Milton, the catastrophic damage it caused, and the efforts to protect lives and property. Before we dive into the details, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Hurricane Milton's development was nothing short of extraordinary. Meteorologists and climate experts were stunned as they watched the storm intensify from a mere tropical depression to a full-blown Category 5 hurricane in just 48 hours. This rapid intensification was caused by an unusual combination of factors, including abnormally warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, hovering at around 31 degrees Celsius, or 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and very low wind shear that allowed the storm to gain strength without being disrupted. Such rapid development is rare, but it's becoming more frequent as global sea temperatures rise due to climate change. Scientists have been warning for years that warmer oceans would fuel more powerful and unpredictable storms, and Hurricane Milton is a prime example of that prediction coming to life. The warm ocean water provided endless energy for Milton, enabling it to strengthen rapidly, and by the time it reached Category 5, it was clear that this storm was going to be devastating. At its peak, Hurricane Milton's central pressure dropped to a record low of 897 millibars, making it one of the most intense hurricanes ever recorded in the Atlantic. As the storm barreled toward the Florida coast, officials scrambled to issue evacuation orders and prepare for the worst. As Hurricane Milton approached, the potential for disaster was clear. With winds over 175 miles per hour and the potential for massive storm surges, over 10 million residents in Florida's coastal regions were ordered to evacuate. Highways were gridlocked as families fled their homes, unsure of what they would return to once the storm had passed. Authorities in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota warned residents to seek shelter inland or move to higher ground. Many people who didn't evacuate before the storm's landfall found themselves caught in rising floodwaters. The storm surge alone was projected to reach over 15 feet in some areas, which would be enough to flood entire neighborhoods. In addition to the storm surge, Milton brought with it torrential rainfall, with some areas experiencing over 24 inches of rain in just a few days. Rivers overflowed, causing flash floods that swept away cars, homes, and even small buildings. The scale of the evacuation effort was massive, and shelters were opened all over the state to accommodate evacuees, but it wasn't enough. Many were left without power, clean water, or access to food and medical supplies. The devastation left behind, destruction of cities and infrastructure. When Hurricane Milton made landfall near Tampa, Florida, it struck with the full force of a Category 4 hurricane, slightly weakened from its peak intensity, but still ferocious enough to flatten buildings and tear through communities. The eyewall of the storm, where the strongest winds are located, passed directly over several heavily populated areas, including Sarasota and St. Petersburg. Entire neighborhoods were wiped out by the storm surge, which carried massive amounts of water inland, flooding streets, homes, and businesses. In coastal areas, the storm surge reached heights of 10 to 15 feet, completely submerging entire communities. Boats were washed ashore, and vehicles were tossed around like toys by the powerful winds and waves. Power outages were widespread, with millions of homes and businesses losing electricity, and the damage to infrastructure was severe. Roads were flooded, bridges collapsed, and airports were forced to close, cutting off essential supplies and aid. Emergency services were overwhelmed as they tried to respond to the thousands of calls for help. The scale of the damage was hard to comprehend. Entire cities were left in ruins. Florida's iconic beaches were not spared either. 
The storm surge washed away large portions of the coastline, and tourism hotspots like Clearwater Beach and Anna Maria Island were left unrecognizable. The economic impact of Milton on Florida's tourism industry alone is expected to reach billions of dollars, with many businesses and attractions shut down indefinitely. One of the most tragic aspects of Hurricane Milton was the human toll it took. Despite the mass evacuations, many residents were either unable or unwilling to leave their homes, and as a result, hundreds of people lost their lives in the storm. The death toll continues to rise as rescue teams comb through the wreckage in search of survivors and recover the bodies of those who didn't make it. Thousands of families have been displaced, their homes destroyed or rendered uninhabitable by the floodwaters and winds. Emergency shelters have been set up across Florida, Georgia, and other nearby states, but they are overcrowded and undersupplied. Many evacuees face an uncertain future with no idea when, or if, they will be able to return to their homes. The psychological impact of such a catastrophic event cannot be overstated. Survivors have described the terror of the storm as it tore through their homes, the sound of the wind like a freight train, and the sight of their neighborhoods disappearing underwater. The emotional trauma will linger long after the storm's physical damage is repaired. In addition to the human and economic toll, Hurricane Milton also caused significant environmental damage. The massive storm surge and flooding not only destroyed homes and businesses, but also wreaked havoc on Florida's delicate ecosystems. Coastal wetlands, which serve as natural buffers against storms, were inundated with salt water, threatening the plants and wildlife that depend on these areas. The surge also carried pollutants from industrial areas and agricultural runoff into rivers and estuaries leading to concerns about long-term contamination and the health of local wildlife. Marine life was also heavily impacted by Milton. Fish kills were reported along the Gulf Coast as the storm disrupted underwater ecosystems. Coral reefs, already under stress from climate change, were further damaged by the intense wave action and sedimentation caused by the storm. In some areas, entire sections of the reef were destroyed further endangering the species that rely on these habitats. Mangrove forests, which are critical to protecting coastal areas from erosion and storm damage, were severely damaged in many areas. These forests act as nurseries for many marine species, and their destruction could have long-term consequences for the region's biodiversity. The long-term environmental impact of Hurricane Milton will take years to fully understand. But it is clear that the storm has caused widespread damage to both natural and man-made environments. Hurricane Milton's rapid intensification and devastating impact have reignited the debate about the role of climate change in fueling more powerful storms. Warmer ocean temperatures and higher sea levels are creating the conditions for hurricanes like Milton to become more frequent and more intense. Scientists have warned that as the planet continues to warm, Storms will not only become stronger, but also more unpredictable, with rapid intensification events like Milton becoming more common. The Gulf of Mexico, where Milton gained its strength, is a hotspot for these types of storms due to its warm waters and proximity to the U.S. coastline. Governments and communities must now face the reality that hurricanes like Milton are no longer once-in-a-lifetime events, but a new normal. Investments in climate resilience, such as building stronger infrastructure, improving evacuation plans, and restoring natural barriers like wetlands and mangroves, will be essential to protect lives and property in the future. But the question remains, are we doing enough to address the root causes of these more powerful storms? And can we adapt quickly enough to minimize the damage when they strike? Hurricane Milton has left behind a legacy of destruction that will take years to recover from. The storm's rapid intensification, the massive evacuations, and the widespread devastation have shown us just how vulnerable we are to nature's fury. As the climate continues to change, hurricanes like Milton will likely become more frequent and more destructive. The lessons from Milton are clear. We need to invest in stronger infrastructure, improve our emergency response systems, and take climate change seriously to protect future generations.
If you found this video informative, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments below. What do you think can be done to better prepare for hurricanes like Milton in the future?